Hi guys and uh, welcome to my review of the Fosio Audio K5 Pro. Uh, this is a uh, amp deck uh, and uh, something which I usually don't review a lot but um, um, I've decided that I will start reviewing more amp decks, dongles and so on, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, um, so I would say that to a certain extent the Fosio Audio was actually one of the um, final, let's say, motivational stones that uh, was thrown into that segment that uh, I just have never delved into it. Anyway, um, this is the box that it comes with. Simple, nothing too fancy. Inside, what does it bring? Well, it brings a little instruction manual, as you can see. It brings a splitter cable for the um, earphone and mic. It brings a Type-C to Type-A cable to hook it up to your PC and it brings an optical cable as well okay so it brings basically all the cables that you need without with the exception of the RCA cables Let me show you that now in a second anyway here is the unit it's a relatively normal sized unit I mean it's not big it's not small just for the sake of comparison that's the Megatron D that's the NX7 amplifier that I like using so you can see it's it's for a desktop it's it's relatively small so as I was saying in the back you have what you have the audio output left and right okay then you have inputs coax optical and the USB which uh, also doubles as the um, power connection uh, obviously connected to an amplifier to uh, sorry to a PC yeah, there's there should be no problem with the the, the PC um, powering it connected directly to a phone an Android phone or a, or an Apple it doesn't work uh, so I had to work around that and I'll, I'll explain in a second why I did in the front what we find we find then three knobs bass treble and the power knob which doubles as uh, the volume as well so if you hold it if you press and hold it turns on and off the unit and then obviously the, the volume nice smooth operation of the of the knobs um, bass and treble center locks and then min, minus and plus I don't really know what other frequency that it's affecting but what I do know and what I did notice is that they affect the the, the bass and the treble in a way which is um, I would say quite well done it doesn't affect it in a way that uh, some uh, for example uh, software EQs do which is they just bloat things up or they exaggerate this actually affects the sound in a, in a, in a nice positive way um, the the power button also worth mentioning is if you tap on it so if after putting it on if you then carry on clicking it takes you through all of the different inputs so the USB the optical and the, 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 the coaxial the uh, microphone output headphone output and yeah, that's basically it. It's a nicely built unit, as I said, nice and sturdy, not too heavy. Um, you know, fine. It works. It works. It, when it comes to the built and so on, it works fine. It's it's it scores. Um, you know, ticks all the right boxes. Okay, nice and solid. Anyway, um, as I was saying, it's um, marketed as a uh, amp deck. Um, you know, uh, compatible with uh, Nintendo, with PlayStation, with PC, with Mac, with everything basically. Um, the exception being on obviously being phones, uh, and and f and, f and to that effect, what I was able then to do was using this power bank and this splitter cable. Okay, I connect this to the phone. This connects to the power bank to give me power, and that then connects to the unit to the K5 Pro, and that way I have absolutely no issues with powering up the unit, and it worked beautifully, and and I, I you know it was fine. Why did I go to all the trouble of doing it this way? Well, uh, first of all, because uh, I just wanted to see if I could do it, uh, and secondly, because um, I don't game, period. Uh, so um, you'll probably have to look at other reviewers to give their opinions on that aspect. Uh, although from what I briefly saw from one or two reviews uh, it does seem to to work favorably in that aspect so my opinion on the K5 Pro will be solely based on its uh, audio capabilities how is it using for you know in a, in a usage just for music um, it uh, retails for about $79 uh, you can get it slightly cheaper at Amazon uh, which when you consider the the package it's offered it's it's pretty good value for money i mean you you have way 
you have dongles which are way more expensive obviously you can't carry on this you know this is not something you're going to carry around like a dongle uh, although i guess you could ultimately do it i mean those of us uh, from days gone by we used to use you know amps and this and that so i guess you could do it but that's not the whole purpose um internally it uses uh, an older uh, texas instruments um uh, uh, op amp uh, sorry a deck chip and also op amps actually um and it's it's basically limited to 24 bits the the, the deck uh, and what that means is that you know being a 24 bit deck there are limitations in terms of the of the of the sampling uh, and it's uh, again limited to uh, 96 kilohertz on the USB and it will go up to 192 on the optical or coaxial. Uh, I mean, not that that is a big problem, but there will be uh, obviously some DSD files that it might not be able to play for accordingly. Um, in terms of its power output, we're talking roughly a thousand milliwatts at 16 ohms, uh, 532, and then it goes down to about 80 milliwatts at 300 ohms. Uh, I would guess that the majority of the applications of this uh, headphone amp will be um, w with with 32 ohms or above. Uh, so the, 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 you know, the 1000 milliohm capability of power will probably not be used that much. Uh, sensitivity, which is another characteristic that's uh, worthwhile mentioning, is 110 dBs, which is kind of the, on the lower side of things. And, and it does show the, the you know, it is not that it's, uh, well, depending on obviously the IEM that I cooked up, the more sensitive ones would showcase a little bit more that background noise than others. But, uh, you know, it's never anything which is obviously too offensive to be to be truthful. I mean, it didn't really bug me uh, because I took into consideration, obviously, the limitations of the unit in terms of price and so on and so forth. And I also was using it basically and only exclusively for, for music. So, uh, you know, you, you obviously will be a little bit more you have to be a little bit more condescendent in certain aspects when this is a product that wasn't specifically designed for that although the reality is it surprised me in a very positive manner okay so on to the, um, the, the the more important thing which is well uh, what does it sound like what is it like in terms of sound well i brought out two units which i i use uh, quite often um, more so the uh, K5, uh, sorry, the, the NX7 uh, with the M15 Q style being used as the deck, then, then the Megatron, although I have begun using the Megatron now more often since I received the impedance adapters, uh, which uh, helped out with, with uh, you know, lowering the noise floor as well significantly. Not that it was crazy, but it, it just helped, especially because this was again not designed specifically for IEMs. It was designed more for headphones and with IEM especially sensitive ones you will pick up that 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 noise floor that uh, that hiss let's put it that way so the impetus adapters come in and actually uh, combat that issue um, let me start by saying that the sound is it, it, it's not a bad sound by no means it, it's not a bad sound and if you listen to it on its own it will actually surprise you. You will notice that it's a kind of a, um, a very um, uh, kind of a leanish sound. You will notice there is a little bit of lack of bass, but it's nothing offensive. Okay, on its own, it's nothing offensive. You notice that it's a neutralish sound, uh, kind of more on the analytical side of things than on the on the more let's say musical part. So it's more analytical, more 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 um, leaner sounding. Um, and it kind of reminds, uh, you know, if you want to make a, a comparison to to uh, to other DAC amps or DAC chips, you, you you can kind of say that this has got a sound, uh, which kind of is um, reminding us of you the usual ESS implementation, especially if you're talking about a, a lower lower tier ESS chip. Okay. Again, let me just say what i just said what i'm saying this is not a bad thing that's just the way it is it, it, it's it's just the way it was designed and it's just the the the, the sound that it's it, it's capable of giving okay um what then that will ultimately mean because of this uh, let's say this 
this more flattish kind of uh, lean sound that is more on the analytical side is that you have to choose carefully which IEM you're gonna you know hook it up to because if you choose an IEM which is really by nature bright then that will only further compound that brightness while if you choose a warmer sounding IEM then that will help out bring out some added uh, detail okay um, so the IEM selection has to be careful um, for example if I was using the uh, the PR2 the KZ PR2 which is one of the IEMs that I used I used as well the uh, um, the 41T the Jazir 41T and I used as well the CVJ May you may ask but why these three well first of all the 41T because I consider it to be one of the go-to's uh, hybrid one of the go-to hybrids at under $200 uh, I mean this sometimes you can it can be had for $139 which when you consider the, the build quality, uh, you know, the usage of good quality parts, Sonyan BAs, uh, beautiful cable. This is the stock cable, okay? That, that is a seriously nice cable. Um, and then a very capable sound. Um, you, you can't really go wrong. I'm sure there are other options, but honestly, I, I kind of have the 41T as probably my, my first go-to, okay? Um, the PR2 because it's basically written the, the, the rules with regards to what a planar should cost and how good it can sound uh, although although and I said it in my review I probably will ultimately prefer the, the PR1 Pro over this um, the fact is this is a, a very good sounding planar uh, I am uh, and one that I used as well because of the fact that it's difficult to power so I wanted to see how the K5 would handle it um, that's because it's got a more uh, warm and neutral sound and this because for the $60 that it costs uh, it's an absolute uh, it's an absolute beast of an IEM it just has gone very under the radar very um, it's been very um, not given the, its attention that it should be getting uh, it is a very very musical I am um, relatively easy to drive and that's why I wanted to see how the K5 would handle that uh, and yeah that's that's basically uh, the reason of these three being selected so with for example the um, the 41T we hooked up um, it brought out a little bit more of detail on the 41T not not that it lacks any detail but it just brought out a little bit more detail on the 41T so if you have a 41T and you want just a little extra detail a little, a little extra openness in the sound the K5 will do a, a decent job of you know getting that little extra out um, is, is it is it like uh, a huge difference that you know it, no it's not a huge difference it's just a very subtle increase in detail okay that's it in the in the in, with regards to the PR2 um, it's not that it struggled no it didn't struggle but you I had to really crank the volume to get to the same kind of volume levels that I was getting with the 41T so although it's got all the power that it's been rated at um, granted this is a very demanding planar it um, it struggled more to power the PR2 uh, than, for example, the NX7 did, or even the Megatron for that, for that effect, okay? Uh, but it did a pretty decent job of that. As for the um, CVJ, the May, it powered it, no problem. It was, it was just, you know, fine. Um, also, worth mentioning that uh, in terms of the base, the leanness that it, have, that it has, kind of, uh, you also kind of felt a little bit that the base here which the, the the 41t does have kind of was a little bit mellowed back and I'm guessing that in combination with a possible increase of a little bit extra detail does kind of change a little bit the overall sound of the 41t but not in a in a disagreeable manner not in a way that you would oh, okay no it's it's it sounds it still sounds fantastic and it still uh, continues being an amazing sounding I am uh, in, in, with regards to the um, to the PR2, uh, yes, I did notice that it lost a bit of the bite of the bass bite. 
the speed was still there but it lost a bit of the base bite um, but uh, at the same time uh, it did uh, kind of help out with the, the mids and the highs uh, and so it compensated that by giving you know or continuing to allow the the, the, the pure two to shine where where it as a planar it usually does shine which is in the, the vocals and, and the highs and with regards to the um, the may um, the May's got very nice space, uh, so something similar to the 41T happened, so it kind of mellowed it down a little bit, but because this is an easy IM to drive, and it's, um, uh, you know, it's not that it's a bright IM, by no means it is a bright, uh, this also kind of, if, if it helped out in the base by keeping it, you know, within tabs, it started making the May uh, reach points where it could, perhaps become aggressive become so this this for me was not a good match okay this is a brighter sounding let's say or easier to drive i am not the best match for that this was an acceptable match uh, and of the three the 41t was probably the one that actually matched the, the nicest with the uh, the nicest with the, the the k5 pro especially because of the fact that it's a more neutral warmish sounding I am. I guess that was the main reason why this this combination, this synergy, uh, worked very nicely. Um, in terms of the the technical capabilities that the K five is is uh, you know is uh, is possible to offer, uh, it it in any one of these IMs, uh, it, you you could see that it's a decently capable IM. Uh, sorry, decently capable deck amp. You know, it's got good enough sound stage, good enough uh, imaging capability. It was it. What this can do with, with regards to the technical aspects of things, of sound reproduction, any one of these three IEMs was able to showcase that in a pretty acceptable manner. Nothing really worthwhile, um, you know, saying uh, that, no, I didn't like this or I didn't like that. If there is any area that I want to perhaps touch up is in the, in to, in, with regards to the, the, the timbre and the tonality, which is something which I really appreciate. Um, in the 41T, that, that integrity of the timbre and the tonality was maintained. Over here, I felt that it penalized a little bit the, the, the timbre and the tonality of the bass. And then over here, I definitely penalized the timbre and the tonality of the highs, of the mids and the highs. It made it become a little bit too un, unrealistic, uh, uh, too almost, almost borderline colored, okay? Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, Considering that it costs what it costs, you can't. Uh, well, I don't want to really, you know, be here uh, saying no. It's, it didn't do this good. No, it's it, it's it's fine. It's fine, and I'm sure that um, uh, with uh, with other IMs, I mean, I could have taken out a whole bunch of other IMs. I'm sure that I will find other IMs that will probably match even better with uh, the K5 Pro. I had some headphones which I was going to uh, also uh, try out, but because most of my listening is done with IEMs, and again, because I don't game, I said to myself, you know what, I'm just going to stick with these IEMs, and, and that's it. And it's, it's, if, if people are interested in wanting to know more how it does in terms of gaming, as I've mentioned, there are a few other reviewers which are specialized in that area, and I'm sure they will, uh, will do a way better job than I do, because how can I be talking about something which I just know absolutely nothing about? Uh, although, like I said, the technical capabilities that it showcased, in my opinion, uh, lead me to believe that it will be capable of being a, a very, a very, a very efficient and a very effective amp deck to be used in in gaming applications where things like positioning of 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 you know game positioning of whatever you you're doing, your enemies, guns, whatever, it, it's it will do it quite well because it, it does do the imaging pretty decently and it does convey a very good sense of realism to where things are located. Um, and that's it, guys. I mean, it's it's, it's uh, there's really nothing more that I can say about the the, the Fuzzy Audio K5 Pro. They Fuzzy has got a whole bunch of products. I mean, they've got amps like you wouldn't believe. Uh, if you go through their website, <laughs> it's just ridiculous the amount of products that they have. Uh, but they all have one very 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 straight and apparent common denominator, which is they all have got very decent build quality. They all are very well, you know, put together. The QC seems to be very, very well done, very effective as well. I've never really heard uh, of anybody uh, complaining about anything from from 
from uh, from Foz even when I was browsing the you know the Amazon and and looking at some other products that they have just to kind of get acquainted. Usually the the, the ratings that the products get are pretty decent. So uh, yes, the occasional one or two that are not good, but in a in a in a uh, very likely scenario of thousands and thousands of units having been sold, the the amount of negative uh, comments oh, is is minimal. Um, and that's it, guys. I mean, that's basically it. Compared then just briefly or very just very quickly with the Megatron and with the, the NX7. Uh, as I was saying in the beginning, yes, individually, you know, by its own, when you listen to it, it sounds fine. The moment you connect it up to these two units in particular, you see straight away where this fails. Um, and it's in that leanness of the base. Fair enough, you could argue with me and say, oh, but you have the base knob, yeah, you can adjust it. Sure, and I did adjust it, and by adjusting it, I got it to, to, to be able to match more effectively and become almost indistinguishable from these two in a quick A-B listening. But when you actually get into the nitty-gritty and you start going and looking after more details and more nuances, you see straight away that this M15 with the NX7 in terms of timbre and tonality is absolutely unreal. Uh, in, you know, the, 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 the sound stage, the technical aspects of this combination, in, for me personally, are absolutely flawless. I mean, it, it does a really good job. Uh, and, and you know there's no leanness here I, I i believe that this combo really is able to show any one of these three ims for what they are 100 percent without introducing any any additional positive or negative aspects with regards to the megatron uh very much the same thing the, the thing about the megatron um and let me put things in this manner. If this is a more clinical kind of sound, more analytical kind of sound, if this is a analytical kind of sound, but with a good sense of musicality, of tonality, uh, the Megatron is the more musical. It's the, the more old school of the three in terms of sound. Yes, it does have good technicalities, yes, but it, this is like there are many cases of IEMs that I've reviewed before, it's all about being musical. It's all about uh, conveying that, uh, that, uh, that uh, old school sound vibe. Um, it, it's not, I mean, this is going to be a little bit, but it's, this is like you're listening to a, a discrete amplifier from the 70s and the 80s. Um, you know, while this will be a discrete amplifier, but of the, the late 90s, early 2000s, where things uh, have still got that musicality, but they polished up, they're more, you know, they, they, they're more refined. Um, and, and technically, if, if I compare these two technically, this will probably edge out the Megatron. Not by a huge bit, but it will probably edge out. But if I compare it musically, then, you know, the, it's very, sim very similar. Compared to the, to, the, to, the, to the K5, these two are, in my opinion, a completely different league. Uh, I mean, completely different league. Fair enough, the, the price here is huge, the price difference is huge. I mean, the NX7 is about $170, the, 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 Q, the M15 is 200 something, so a huge price difference. But the Megatron costs $60, and uh, $50, $50 actually, I'm sorry, $50. So $50 versus $80, uh, you know, I can only fault the Megatron. If I want to fault the Megatron in something, uh, it's because it doesn't have a volume knob. But, you know, they they say they did that in an, in, a, in an attempt to have a more uh, direct signal path without any uh, introduction of any additional part that can in any way deteriorate the sound signal. So there you have it, guys. Um, it's a nice enough product. doesn't cost a lot of money. If you are into gaming, I think it will be probably the, the, one of the, you know, a, a very solid option to have. And at the same time, it's also very capable in terms of sound reproduction. So if you if your thing is gaming but you like listening to music occasionally, it it will be it will be fine. It will do its job, uh, and it and it won't break the bank ultimately. Anyway, guys, as always, like and subscribe. You know, click that button. Make sure the the YouTube gods like my videos, um, and uh, you know it helps out the algorithm. Helps out people wanting to see more of my channel. And as always, I appreciate all the support you guys give. I mean that's what I'm here for. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. All right, you take care now. Bye bye.